Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 11 of the Eggplant Performance Tutorial Series. Uh, in this chapter we're going to discuss server monitoring. So uh, when you're running a test uh, you're obviously able to see response times of your key transactions and also things like the virtual user concurrency and transaction rates. Uh, but that only tells half the story really. Uh, when you're uh, testing something you, uh, you will probably want to know how well the hardware is performing of the machines or, or the servers that you're uh, interacting with as part of your uh, client simulation. And so we have some built-in uh, methods of monitoring uh, that you'll see in this table here. So we have support for various different operating systems. At the very top there we have Windows. Uh, the way we monitor Windows uh, servers or even client machines is through uh, Windows' own built-in uh, performance monitor, or also known as Perfmon. So uh, Perfmon is installed on pretty much every single flavor of uh, Windows. Uh, I don't think it's enabled by default on some embedded uh, compact edition uh, devices, uh, but on most server or pretty much all server class machines you'll be able to find uh, Perfmon. And so Perfmon uh, has a pretty large list of categories and counters that you can monitor and uh, through eggplant performance uh, you have access to all of those and you don't actually need to install anything on uh, a Windows machine in order to be able to monitor it. Uh, so uh, you do need to make sure that you're using an account that has sufficient privileges to access a remote perfmon and there's also uh, one or two uh, firewall ports that uh, may need to be opened up in order to be able to access the server from whichever machine is performing the monitoring. Uh, next up we have Linux, so we do have support for Linux uh, servers as well and uh, the technology or the command line tools in this case that we make use of uh, are a combination of SAR, IOSTAT, VMSTAT, FREE and DF. And so the combination of those gives you similar uh, types of information as you would um, expect from the likes of uh, Perfmon. Uh, so we're talking things like CPU, memory usage, disk activity, uh, network activity as well, uh, those kinds of things. So as long as those tools have been installed, we'll be able to pull back um, uh, measurements from them in real time as well as uh, then to be able to see all of the stats when you look at your results in Analyzer. Uh, the next two are mobile devices, so we have support for Android via ADB, which is a very common uh, tool when working with Android devices. Uh, that doesn't require an explicit agent either, uh, we're just making use of the built-in uh, ADB. For iOS we supply an app on the Apple Store called Egg Monitor, it's completely free of charge. Uh, it's only there because Apple have uh, restrictions in place that mean you can't just uh, monitor an, uh, an iOS device uh, without it going through an app, so that's uh, why it's there. And finally we have the cross-platform uh, Java management extensions capability. So uh, JMX is an interface uh, to the Java virtual machine uh, that is uh, running a, a given application. So for example, uh, you'd be able to hook into the JVM uh, running WebLogic uh, in order to query its uh, usage. All right, let's have a look at the process for creating and using a monitoring target then. Uh, in this case, uh, the server that I'm testing, that NopCommerce site, um, that's running on a web server. It actually happens to be a Windows-based uh, server uh, running IIS. And so it's actually Perfmon that I'd like to use in order to monitor that. Uh, server. So uh, monitoring targets are defined in workspace mode, so you'll need to be in workspace in order to see this folder. Uh, just right clicking it and selecting new monitoring target uh, is the starting point basically. First step is just to give uh, the monitoring target some kind of a name. Um, in this case it is just going to be web server. Uh, it's running on Windows, so I select that there. Uh, it does have this particular IP address and uh, should this server be on either AWS uh, or Azure uh, then I can select specify that here and, and get some additional options but in this case I just want to interact with the basic uh, perfmon on this particular Windows machine so this is all I need to specify on this screen. 
Once I hit next, I'm presented with a few different uh, options here for uh, templates. So we, we do have some measurement templates that contain uh, some uh, counters that we believe you'll probably want to have a look at. Um, so in the case of the Microsoft Windows uh, template, uh, we'll have included some useful defaults for um, uh, keeping an eye on CPU, uh, memory, disk and network activity. The server is uh, happens to be running IIS as well, and I think also ASP.NET, so I'm just going to activate those uh, templates as well. Uh, if the counters end up being empty or not, not really telling us anything, uh, then I can fine-tune the list uh, later on once I complete this wizard. On this next screen, I can determine, amongst other things, the poll interval. So that's how frequently we'll be collecting measurements from the target server. Um, the default is 10 seconds. I'm just going to drop this down to 5 so we get a bit more frequent updates. Uh, and I can also select uh, which injector machine should be responsible for actually conducting the monitoring. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your test controller. Uh, it can be any injectors that you've uh, defined. In my case, I still just have the, uh, the uh, built-in local host injector here. Now that's useful in situations where the controller machine might not necessarily have direct access to uh, the server you're trying to monitor and perhaps you have an injector that's in a DMZ zone or something like that uh, that does have access. As part of connecting to Perfmon, you do need to specify a, an account that has sufficient privileges to query remote Perfmon. And so that account is just a standard Windows account on that machine or, or even a domain account. Um, uh, regardless, the account just needs to either be a member of the administrators group uh, or the performance log users group, I believe it's called. It's one of the built-in uh, groups available on Windows. So I'll just fill in that information now. Okay, there we go. And now we'll actually uh, pull this web server now. And um, should this complete, then it uh, pretty much means everything is set up and good to go. Uh, you'll get a list of uh, the categories and counters back that you've uh, requested or that were in the templates. And uh, assuming the check passes, then you should be able to monitor that server when you're actually running your test as well. Alright, the check is complete and we now have a bunch of categories displayed here with a with a tick next to them. Those are ones you don't uh, need to do anything with. Uh, however, in order to proceed, uh, you do have to sort out the network interface here, which actually has a few different instances available. And so we, we can't really predict which one of these you'll actually want to uh, monitor, so there's just a step here to select those now. So I think those two are the ones of interest, and so that's all I need, and I can just click next and finish the wizard. So that creates another node here underneath the web server that's just been defined, and these are the, all the counters available as part of the templates that were chosen. Now that was uh, part one, uh, so this just defines the monitoring target, but it doesn't mean that all of your tests uh, will suddenly uh, be monitoring the server. Uh, that's the second part of the process. So in your uh, test, when you have a test selected, you'll see a monitoring tab. Uh, once you click that, you'll now see an entry for uh, all of the monitoring targets you've got defined. Uh, you just need to uh, enable the monitor for, uh, for whichever monitoring target you'd like to monitor. Uh, make sure to save as well and at this point test controllers should have updated and you'll see a folder here with all of the system under test metrics that are being collected now uh, and so they appear as these uh, panes that or windows that you can just um, open or put onto the dashboard display uh, pretty much the same as any other uh, of the uh, available panes here so i'll just start the test and we should see some uh, some of the system under test metrics coming through. So that's it, we've got our data coming through now and this will be available uh, throughout the rest of this test until the test ends and you'll then also be able to see data for this in Analyzer, so that'll be the next step. Okay, the test has just been running for about 30 minutes uh, so I'm going to stop it now or tell it to gradually ramp down 
and uh, we'll then have a look at the results in Analyzer uh, to see uh, how to get these charts to display there. Okay, there's a signal that the test is completed. If we now go into Analyzer and uh, open the Test Run Browser, which is accessed from this button up here, uh, you'll be able to locate the test run that you've just completed. Uh, in this case, it's this basic test number 18. Uh, there's a little checkbox in the bottom right, uh, which is going to ensure that we create chart templates for each of the uh, system under test measurements that were in this test. So you'll see them uh, here on the left hand side already. I've already been through this process. Um, so I already have chart templates for each of the performance counters that I'm interested in, in generating charts from. So in order to be able to generate a chart, uh, there needs to be, or, you know, it's uh, preferred that there is some kind of chart template that you would use. Uh, so we'll automatically create that as part of this test import. Okay, there's our test imported. Uh, now the next step is to uh, create an analysis view uh, that allows us to uh, determine whether or not we want to look at the entire test run or if we want to exclude the ramp up for example. In this case I want to uh, just look at everything that was captured as part of this test, so I don't need to make any changes here. And this is where I then select what kinds of uh, data I want to generate from this test run. So we have some built-in um, uh, analysis views um, that's going to create uh, transaction errors and warnings uh, charts and, and summary tables. Uh, that's the default one. Default web adds this a web folder down here that has the HTTP request level data included as well, which might not uh, be relevant uh, depending on which type of test you're running. In my case I'm running a web test, so I would probably want this one. Uh, but what I've actually done is created my own uh, analysis template, which then also includes the system under test metric. So I still have the transactions, uh, the web folder, uh, but I've added all of these in here. And, and these are all the different chart templates, uh, one for each of the system under te test metrics that was captured as part of this test. Uh, so you can create uh, your own analysis view templates just by going, or, you know, right-clicking on the analysis templates folder uh, and, and recreating something like this. Uh, so this will give me quite a lot of data to look at uh, when the uh, analysis view has been created. Okay, the view has been created and we can see it up here. So if I expand these folders, uh, you can see all of the uh, charts that have been created, or in this case with the summaries, uh, we're actually just displaying a table. Uh, so here's our table of uh, different transactions, their average response times, minimum, maximum, and uh, below here are all the system under test metrics. Let's see if we can put some of these together. There's the ability to link charts. Uh, we'll go into more depth on Analyzer in a subsequent tutorial chapter, but for now I'm just going to uh, put some of these onto the same display. There we go, so we've got our response times up here, um, memory usage in the middle, and CPU usage at the bottom. That pretty much sums up this chapter on server monitoring. Uh, keep an eye out on future chapters that'll cover Analyzer in greater detail. Uh, but I will point out that the next chapter will actually be about objectives, uh, which is completely new functionality that was added in the recently released version 7.2. Thanks for watching.